Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope you're all doing well this evening. Welcome. Hello, people. Good to see you. Um, I'm Mina Morita, she, her, hers, and I'm calling in from the unceded land of the Ohlone people here in San Francisco today. Hey, people. Uh, my name is Sean San Jose. Um, I work with the group Campo Santo and very excited to share with you all on how around here. Uh, can't see everyone, but putting out to the universe, if we're talking about uh, pronouns, pronouns, any preferred pronouns for me or any and all that make you all feel comfortable, make me feel comfortable. And I'm um, technologically uh, impaired from San Francisco, uh, which is Ohlone land, Miwok, Pomo land, all stolen land. And here we are. And I should say, I'm uh, the artistic director for Crowded Fire Theater. So excited to be here to talk about some amazing things that are in the works and um, that we've been celebrating over this last hard year. Yeah, um, awesome. what is exciting about what we're gonna share with you all today is Crowded Fire Theater and Campo Santo uh, were the lucky, lucky recipients to be able to not only work with the great star Finch, the playwright, the revolutionary mind, the beautiful sister that she is, but we are the first, I believe, uh, collaborative group. Uh, both of our groups got this Mellon residency uh, with HowlRound to work with Star Finch in the, the three year long playwright residency. And so it's really an honor, it's really exciting. And I think it's also emblematic about what kind of work we all are trying to do together. Something a little bit different as we do things a little bit different in the Bay, the leftmost coast and more collaborative perhaps in some ways, um, and also more real in some ways. We were, are both two smaller companies uh, that have been able to sustain for several decades, but also have um, had small budgets and uh, the melon has been expanding more and more the more they do these rounds and the kind folks at how around uh, uh, sort of let us work a much more collaborative and piece together application and lo and behold we got it and we're really thrilled about that and again thrilled what those possibilities mean of getting to work with a writer of starfinch's stature vision and future seeking and so what we want to share with you all today is the first real uh, shared public event that we, we uh, did together. Yeah, and I just want to add that um, it's huge in terms of Mellon's shifting towards thinking about how to support local um, artists. And so for us, STAR is local and visionary in terms of um, upholding sort of what the Bay is, has been about historically. Um, and also to have, you know, a three-year salary to be on staff with both of our organizations is an incredible life-changing event for all of us um, and is changing the genetics, I think, of how we're all thinking because we're thinking together. Yeah, and one of the most exciting things you all are gonna know about this if you aren't hip already to the amazing power, like I say, the future seeking writing of Starfinch. But one of the most exciting things about getting the opportunity to have a residency like this is to not only have time to develop, share, collaborate on the plays, the productions of Starfinch, but really the, the larger vision. And so what we're gonna talk about today is this vision, this curated vision by STAR, a feast of resilience. And that's really for us, I, I think I can say this, Mina, about what our two groups were looking um, forward to is rooting STAR rightfully at the center of not only this residency, but where we're headed in terms of uh, the community work, in terms of creative work, in terms of collaborative work and it's about rightfully centering the black woman in the storytelling and the curation and in the power seat as, as well she should be here and so like i say 
you will see productions from Star, but what we're going to get to see here is part of a much more expansive vision about gathering people and creating movement. Yeah. And with that, I guess, Mina, shall we bring on the star of the Please, event? Star. The one and only Star Finch, Star Child, my sister. Here she is, playwright in residence with Crowded Fire and Capo Santo. Hey. Hey. Peace, y'all. Thanks so much for joining us today. And Star will take us uh, through from a sort of conception to the event itself. But we are lucky to be joined by some of our close friends and family and also collaborators and collaborators of that day at the Feast of Resilience. Uh, the one and only, the sage, Ellen Sebastian Chang. And also uh, one of our great collaborative partners, performer, writer, do it all, Troy Rocket. <laughs> and I think a magical thing is gonna, boom, there's the magic. <laughs> And I think we're, um, Troy is coming back and joining us soon. Welcome to the virtual sphere as usual. Yeah, that is it. Troy <laughs> is not making, us. that is not a <laughs> prince-like statement by Troy. Troy has a, a beautiful face and a beautiful image that he will proudly present momentarily. Hello, Ellen. Hello. Hi. Thank you for inviting me. I'm so excited. Thank you. And from here, where do we go, Mina? We are uh, going to have Star, I think, um, talk to us about the Feast of Resilience, um, which is the event that brought us all together this June, um, and hearing after Star, getting to see some video clips. Uh, Star, take it away. Okay. I'll jump in. Um, one of the amazing things about this event was that it took a year of, um, mm -hmm. of dreaming about it and dreaming about it during the pandemic, you know, a time of, of no time or a time of everything feeling off of its access, access. Um, mm -hmm. So the first sort of seed for it was when Sean, Mina and I met on Zoom uh, in like May of 2020. Um, Compo had shut down rehearsals for my play in March. That was supposed to go up side effects. Uh, we all were taking like March and April to kind of figure out what what was happening in the world. Um, everything mm -hmm. was very chaotic and scary. Um, so we met by Zoom and, you know, now Zoom is the norm, you know, but then it was still kind of like, oh, I guess this is what we're doing. I guess this is how we're connecting and keeping our humanity. And so we were all kind of processing. It was kind of a therapy uh, session a little bit. And um, for whatever reason, I had um, Jonestown and the People's Temple in my mind really strongly, I think because I felt so locked down in San Francisco. And um, that event in my mind is something that rocked me as a child and I don't feel it's ever properly been sort of um, recognized by the city. So for whatever reason that was bubbling up in my psyche and just this idea that, you know, 50 odd years later, 40, 50 odd years later, um, I think most black people do what we're still having, like, I wish I could run away to some other rural place and live off the land and live, you know, with my own community type of thing. And with Trump and all of that, um, just how unsettling that was, you know, for all that time to have passed and to still feel at this place of being on the run or, or still dreaming of a world that seems so futuristic, even though it's really simple what people want, you know, and um, I said to Sean and Mina, I wish we could, I just wanna feed my community. Like, I wish we could just have a revolutionary feast. And they were like, okay, yeah, let's let's hold that idea. Let's explore that. Um, so that's what we did, you know, over the rest of 2020, whenever we would check in monthly, we would talk about that and say like, okay, what do we, what do we think about that? When do we think we could try to do it? 
um, we set a date for June 2021, totally in the dark, just, you know, a dart of like, that's what we're going to try to hit. And um, it grew from there. Um, by the end of the year, you know, towards December, I, I started having these visions about people washing up on shore, like walking down an empty beach and, and coming across people who had washed up after, you know, a storm kind of thing and wanting to, again, gather people, bring them towards a fire and say, you know, here's a blanket, let me warm you up and let's, let's talk about what we've just been through and what we're currently going through. Um, so I expressed that to them as well. And then we started to get more into like the nitty gritty of like, okay, well, what might the day look like? You know, I really wanted um, there to be amazing food. And I also wanted to feed people's spirits and their psyche. So then we started talking about um, what artists, you know, that we could use and um, invite to be a part of this. And it just continued to blossom slowly from there. Um, the top of 2021 brought, you know, the storming of the Capitol and the whole, whatever that, you know, whatever that was about. Um, and I wrote something that I want to share, actually, that I shared with the artist um, who participated in the day. And it was just me really trying to process what the year had been and what where we were going leading into the feast like the feast was really something that was sprung out of my heart and i kept just following my gut and and walking on instinct towards this destination that i knew i wanted to reach um so i wrote something called things a playwright kept to herself in 2020 when asked what have you been up to during zoom happy hours <laughs> i've been counting the zeros in your gaze while our minds mirror error codes, error codes across these screens turned maps. Easing my way down a blue light road, following the haunted echo in my chest, where crown chaos collects payment on a corner called breath. I've been tallying historical repetitions, but mostly listening for the rhythmic double dutch of resurrection, asking myself if I possess the stamina to build a world made free after I meet you in the pocket and we move from there, clean and quiet as a holy blade. I've been thanking madness for holding on to the miracle while watering the swollen promise seated within a system downed. Protocol tangled round my ankles like a sweaty nightgown got me stretched naked in a poppy field of black fury. We're all landscape now, you and me. No more presidents needed, dead or otherwise. All those underground months spent trust over milky coals, then left our hearts spoon tender, even as multiple fires still dare us to finally fall off the bone. So I'd say more than anything, I've been awaiting a call to feast. Mm. Mm. Wow. Third eye. So yeah, I mean, that was... Um, that's where I was coming from. And I, and we just, we set the table, you know, and, and everyone chose. Well, then you saw a little bit of the, uh, that's probably the first 30 seconds of everyone seeing each other and then the whole day as well. Yeah. <laughs> Those are just some, some candids of what 
of what the energy in the day was like. And just to set the picture for folks too, because we were still, I mean, what's so deep about it is that what Star is explaining is that she visioned something in the midst of this madness, right? That would be a release. And before we can even get to that stage, we had to, we had to prepare it in some ways, you know, producer wise. Mm -hmm. So as a group collaboratively, we, we set that stage, but we were also in the midst of the, the health madness of okay. actual fucking pandemic. And so we wanted so badly to be together and to realize this vision, but we were also being as cautious as we could. Um, and so this moment in time is August, right? Where madness is leaking out again. But if you can just imagine a couple months back, it was it was the great release. The gates got back opened back up. And so we was already just like, let's rush through the fields together and be with each other. But we were also being cautious. And so we had planned it prior to June, but wanted to do it very limited for health's sake. So we were preparing it as Crowd of Fire and Campo Santo, and that required, you know, 10 of us to, you know, to get the food ready, get your flowers ready, this, that, and the other. And so we really could, we wanted to limit it to, to 40 people, so we would be 50 people total, and it was in an outdoor setting. Um, and at this point, as sensible, sane human beings, we're vaccinated as well, but fresh air of Oakland, California. But it became very more precious in some ways because we needed to to keep it uh, special and limited in that way. Um, shall well, we roll into oh, sorry, go well, ahead. I just wanted story. to say it was just amazing, I think, um, prescient, the timing, because it was the first time for almost all of us to actually be outside of our germ pods, <laughs> you know, outside of our homes with other people and it was such a strange and beautiful sensation to be in our full bodies i think we're all oh. we're gonna do the intro well i mean maybe while we're waiting for the video to roll um star do you want to talk about just um how you know how the different artists you commissioned and also in terms of the Mellon Playwright Residency and the discretionary funds, like how that was powerful to be able to, to support artists during this time for this. Yeah, for sure. Um, I had discretionary funds through the Mellon Foundation grant. So um, I was able to add three more um, artists to participate and that's not something that I was usually used to as a playwright to be like in producer mode of like oh yeah I want more I'm gonna I'm gonna do that I'm gonna press the button on that and make that happen um so that was super you know super dope to be able to uh take control you know as the playwright and 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 punch in the vision exactly how I saw it um we had Troy Rocket, uh, which we'll see. And um, he did a piece that was super magical. And be, like, we'll, we'll get to that and, and the um, specifics of that. And then we also had uh, Oyster Knife. And that performance was one that, um, I feel like it just captured everyone's emotion of the day of just, we're still here and we're alive. and it's magical and what are we going to um to do with that you know i i think you know we put we put tissues on all the tables for a reason because <laughs> it was overwhelming you know and ryan kind of breaks it down when she frames the day for us but it was a lot to be around people again and remember that zoom isn't it and um connecting with other human beings involves exchanges of energy and just watching that and participating in that um, was almost a holy experience for me. Like mm -hmm. at the end of the day, my body, when I got home, it was so <laughs> fried. Like I literally felt like I got hit by a, tr a truck 
but at the same time, like my my spirit and my energy was like vibrating out of my body, and uh, that stayed with me for days. Like for days after, I literally had almost a high, just like a love buzz high, and um, it, it was everything, you know. I think we're ready to roll the video. Okay, cool. The ceremony and everything that you do from this moment forward will be ceremony. We want to make sure, and I, I want to compel all of us to make sure that we don't jump back into the world as it was or jump back into the world without communicating first to ourselves what we intend for it to be and communicate to the world what it has to be for us. So we're here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say, I say. Every word is an incantation. Every hug is a prayer, right? Like for real. We we didn't get to do this, and I think that that pause was quite intentional from the universe, um, and so we have to acknowledge it as we reemerge. And so I'm going to start by introducing the first performer of the afternoon, and then things will just roll. And um, I invite us all to really, just really be open and present to this. I, I maybe I'm saying this more for myself, yes. right? But just to um, absorb every word, I'm gonna read every word of every bio. I am going to taste every flavor of every food, right? I'm gonna savor every drop of every beverage. I'm going to do my best to look into everybody's eyes. I don't do human contact very well as it is. <laughs> um, awkward is like what I do. But, um, <laughs> but I'm going to do my damnedest to just really connect with each one of you, even for a second, and just know that I'm, I'm, I'm really trying. I'm really Boy, trying. Rock it. Troy Rocket uses art to return to self and to explore new possibilities of connection. <laughs> Go on and receive yourself right now, Troy. <laughs> Troy is interested in the healing components of art and technologies. Troy's piece is called Fenestration. Fenestration is an interactive writing exercise of self-indulgence and the reimagination of touch during a global pandemic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two black queer bodies, one femme and the other trans mask, engage in, a, in virtual musings after surviving a year of singledom, horrendous leadership, <laughs> anti-blackness, and betrayal. Just as the vaccine became available to the public, Troy Rocket met Olivia Hunt in Zoom space. Their introductory conversations naturally led to stories of survival as abundantly black beings. Hello, abundantly black beings. Yeah. <laughs> Troy came up with a prompt. Quote, this year my skin was mine. End quote. This year my skin was mine and invited Olivia Hunt to partake. The two pieces of writing will be joined for the first time on Saturday, June 12th. Yeah. We're lucky. Olivia and Troy have yet to meet in person. Here we are. Here we are. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Fenestration invites you to witness an introduction and a return to one's own touch. So like real, this is facts. Like I wrote a piece, Olivia did not know that piece. Olivia wrote a separate piece to the prompt, the year my skin was mine. Um, and we were like, we're gonna put it together right now for you. And this is like what's happening. Yeah. Um, so, all right, so we'll just get started. And just like our outfits, we didn't coordinate this. <laughs> <laughs> It just happened. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> yes. You ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. 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 
The year my skin was mine, touch was discouraged, but my pap smear still scheduled. I did not want grief making a home, a permanent home of my body. And typically they aren't so bad, but a year without touch, and this was one of the only options. As trauma has already permeated the top layers of my delicate skin and is doing its best to reside within my marrow. At my appointment, my doctor tells me about a new bill that was passed and gave me suggestions about freezing my eggs. The speculum is still inside. This body, my skin, always a target within the constricting borders of our predatory society. But this year, my skin is mine, and I'm no longer taking suggestions about what to do in or with this body. But I don't reside there. I go home and fill in the space differently on my terms. My dark, oh so smooth, and oh so vibrant melanated skin, yeah, yeah, literal yeah. magic, that tells, of, that tells of my resilience. Go out, let the sun greet me, go on hikes and take my shoes off to be touched to touch soil with the bottoms of my flat feet. So in a year without penetrating foreign gazes, I turn inward, intentionally care for self. The year my skin was mine, I didn't only forget touch. I forgot my shoes, I forgot my underwear, I forgot work, I forgot <laughs> words. <laughs> Unguarded and vulnerable, a break open, lean in and journey through the multidimensional portals present within me. And now, even after I emerge from an odd sort of hibernation, I have to remind myself of the days. Self-pleasure as the roadmap with which I remedied woundedness. Their names like food turn plaque in the mouth. What's the flavor of a Sunday? Indulgence, my vice, a reflection of my defiance became a necessary act for survival and resistance. But boy, you ain't worn your church shoes in years. During a year when the world was in disarray, and as we shift our gears once more, I notice I'm looking at the time more and paying less attention to my natural tics. But in my skin, I witnessed myself and held closer to the things that brought comfort. The year my skin was mine, I was less robotic, nothing energizing about this rabbit. An immersive process in which I surrendered to put pure mischief of insatiable desire to the pure mis mischief of insatiable desires. Wish my student loan debt was in naps because I paid those off daily. I devoured self. To be abundant, abundant in all things, especially rest. Receive the touches I heatedly longed for. Let the grief settle in. Submitted fully to my own skillful pleasuring. The grief been here. Savored the taste of my own juices. And here. Abundance never lack. So I get comfortable with discomfort. The scent lingers. Understand touch is a, a vibration that can be called upon. Pleasure looked like many things last year. In the absence of that familiar friction, the want grows on me like fungi. Gave my body the rest it desperately demanded. Ecosystems of memory breathe. Sought refuge and in turn found solace in this isolation. Well, didn't you know to be black is to have been touched different? As I cur curiously explored the depths of my being. Well, didn't you know to be black girl is to have been touched different? In process, stripped, stripped away tired old narratives. We die and we survive. Remembering as an abundantly dynamic being, there are no prerequisites to honoring self. I say I made it. I worship, I return to softness. I say I made it this far. Made an altar of this tender body. But the more I'm here, I start to look around. Dear self, I forgive you for my harshness. I'm missing some things and not everybody I love is here. 2020, ceremoniously engaged in the reclamation of my being. <laughs> We die and survive. So here I am presently, mirroring goodness. I say I made it. Carved out the space I never had and gave self permission I did not know was needed to cultivate this level of self intimacy. I say I made it this far. I am more than the vessel and labor did not, need not be my baseline. The year my skin was mine. Engrossed in self, immersed in my softness. Look at you reimagining touch to be whole. I say a prayer to my body. Thank you for existing. And gratitude. I'm so grateful that when the pandemic hit, I had so much memory of touch tucked into all my creases. I, have you ever been transformed by your own touch? What does it mean for a black man to ask for touch?
this is ceremony. We are here for ritual. Whether you knew it or not, this is a feast of resilience. Uh, the altar inside. I don't know if you saw it. I don't know if you participated or, or you know, worked with it, put something in it, on it, mm. so on and so forth. But an altar is a table. I can't do it. I can't do it, Britt. I want to sound, I'm going to just practice more at home, in the mirror. Practice with my grill in. Damn it. I should have been doing Zooms with my grill in this whole time. An altar is a table used as the focus for a ritual, especially for making sacrifices or an offering to a deity. This whole thing, I'm going to say it 3,000 times today, is ceremony. You are at church. This is religious and a spiritual experience. We are about to break bread at an altar, a table. We will enjoy the sacrifices of somebody's labor, some being's body. While you are doing that, as I opened this before, I want you to savor the labor, right? Enjoy every moment. Acknowledge the work that was put in to preparing the meals and this entire experience for us, for you to share with one another. So in that vein, please check out the images that are in there by Brit Sense. Please visit the altar. Please leave something at the altar. Um, and if you didn't yet, be an altar unto yourselves. So the music will turn on, go grab some food, enjoy the feast of resilience. All right. This is ceremony. Right on. Beautiful. Beautiful to see Troy and everybody. I just want to sort of say uh, in a framing uh, to elaborate on what Star was saying. So that, that was video from the day captured by David Mai, who shot and edited everything. And Star had commissioned five amazing artists or five amazing groups, Troy Rocket, Oyster Knife, Brit Sense, Brittany Sensabaugh, photographer, uh, San Francisco Poet Laureate, the great Tongo Ison Martin, and the one and only Rashad Pridgen, a ritual masquerade performer, out of body experiencer for us all. And what you got to see, folks, through the technological <laughs> stuff was just uh, a taste, which was really the opening. For it all, so um, you want to take it, Mina, or shall we? Yeah, I mean, I think it would be great to hear from Troy and Ellen. I think what we've spent a lot of time reflecting on um, after the event was just how it was ritual, how it was intentionally stepping back into space with each other, and how you know it would have felt so strange and empty not to have that, to just go in back into business as usual because it's no longer business as usual. And Ellen, I think as you said, you know, like there was never any norm, like that's all just cover up. That's not real. And what is real is the moment that we're in. So we'd love to hear from you, Ellen, about what that day meant to you and to all of us um, together collectively. Can you hear me okay? Yes, thank okay. you. Um, when Star first uh, asked me to attend the event and she said, I'd like you to speak at that moment in time, um, I was very hesitant not to come to the event, but hesitant to speak because I felt that after uh, a year, words were starting to 
and I think they're continuing to kind of fail me in the understanding of the incredible uh, epic change that we're going through as a species that's called human. Um, and so I, I, I Star and I text back and forth a lot before that event, and, uh, and it was really for myself, I just kept saying, Star, all my instinct tells me is that I'm trusting you and I'm following you even when I'm feeling uh, profoundly lost. And uh, showing up at the end, in fact, I actually went to a different location and was profoundly lost and trying to find my way there. And when I got there, I just felt, um, you know, I'll say I felt really splintered and shattered and like, wow, what's going on? But as soon as I came out of the elevator and onto the rooftop and saw all the, the bodies of people that I had not seen in so long, all of a sudden it was like an in profound exhale. And I was like, oh, I understand on a deep cellular level why, well, why this was needed. And um, viewing Troy's piece again, what what really has leapt out for me in this moment is that uh, as an artist, as a, a collaborative artist, I just felt like what a profound risk. What a profound risk that Troy and their collaborator took. Profound to just say, I'm going to put out a statement where we don't know each other, but we're going to take a risk with each other. And so what it brought up for me is that so much the way theater and art has been under the guise of professionalism has been hobbled and corralled and that we really don't take risk anymore. We pretend and we, we, we act like we're taking risk. But that day was about the beauty of creative risk taking and Troy's work of all the works there. They were all brilliant, but Troy's work for me was like, well, this is the kind of tension that I miss in theater and the arts, that kind of tension that's um, living rather than rehearsed. There is something uh, magical about it and electric about it because of the fact I said, oh, this is, this is sexy, you know, this is, this, this is what sexy feels like when you're that old cliche. That's the creativity of life, you know, so it's, it was beautiful to me. I, I really loved it. And I, that could have only happened because Star took in Mina and Sean, the three of you met and decided we're going to take an incredible creative risk to say, how are we in proximity together? The risk of proximity after so long of being apart and how close do we need to be to, um, to touch each other? Is it six feet? Is it across the room? And I realized, yeah, you can be way across the room or across the country and start to vibrationally connect. So I'll just, I'll just stop there. And I will add, it's so strange to, to get ready to hug people and everyone say, I've been vaccinated. And then my <laughs> response is, me too. And so it's like, ah, I don't know what's happening. And I still don't know, but yeah, it was beautiful. It was really beautiful. I wanna briefly just add um, context for Troy's piece. Like you want, we reached out to all the artists maybe two days before and Troy, we thought Troy was just going to do a monologue and Troy was like, actually, I want to do something Zoom with this collaborative thing. And um, my first response was like, oh, like, I don't know about Zoom. Like, I don't think Zoom is sort of the the vibe of this event. And Troy was totally like cool about it. And he was like, all right, you know, I'll just read mine and then I'll give a link to the other piece. And it could be like this cool, like treasure map kind of thing. So we were like, cool. So then I walk in Saturday morning and, and Troy comes in with Olivia and he's just like, oh yeah, you know, she got on plane and she came out here. We're going to do it together. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. That's the type of magic we on today. Like that's right. It, it's go time clearly. Uh, 
That's right. great. What was that experience like for you? Yeah, I mean, yeah, just thank you, Star. You know, um, I think I discussed with Olivia after the event, we were talking, like so much of being a Black person is about survival and the pandemic. Um, and what that space offered me was that I forgot about surviving for a moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was like, oh snap, is this what it feels like? Um, so it just, it was just a testament to how we need more ritual, you know, and how, yeah, the arts, that's what it is for me. It's all ceremony, it's all ritual. And to go that much time without it, yeah, <laughs> that was, that was uh, it was just, I needed that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just the, um, just what you said, Ellen, I really relate to that, you know, because like when I got the call from Star and Sean, I was like, oh, shoot, okay. Hmm. I was getting into that mode again when you said like, not to pretend, but just to like having to be polished and all point all the time. You know, I was like, all right, I got a couple pieces, you know, uh, all right. And then I was like, no, that's not where we're at. That's not where I'm at. And so um, it was just really great to show up where I was at, you know. I'm not polished. I don't have any polish to it. Like, that's just what, where I, what I wasn't at. So oh, it's great. Trey, I just have to say, it was polished. And actually viewing it again made it just shine even brighter for me to witness it a second time was that there's things that I missed the first time. So actually having it captured um, to view again really made me say, oh, this is, this is where we all want to be. Everyone wants to say, hey, man, you know, I was at the first Jimi Hendrix concert, you know, because this is why this work is live, because anything can happen. It is not Zoom. It is not television. It is not film. It is alive. It is, it is hopefully smelling the sweat and breathing it all in. So actually seeing it again, I said, oh, yeah, I'm having a memory of how it felt in that moment to, to witness these two people have just met. They are in physical space together. And that added a kind of tension to the whole thing. But what I call good tension. You need tension to hold the table up. You need tension. Gravity is tension, you know? It's, and so to me, uh-uh, no. I, I have to say, oh, you, it, it was polished in a way that we don't witness enough because you're already polishing your craft every day inside yourself. So when you show up, you're, you're going to shine because you're already doing that. You know, so I thought you took a beautiful risk. And I, I personally, I, just, I loved it. I loved it. Thank you. It was also nice to get dressed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that part, <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's great. Talk Everybody dressed up. Like I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Hey, Ellen, can you, there's something about, you know, the energy of necessity that was happening that day. Like we needed to touch, we needed to express, we needed to release. And you had said something during the share about capturing kind of that energy, but how we, how we move forward from here with true intention and with bold intention and with just like uh, about it intention and real black intention, community intention. And can you speak on that a little bit? It was just, it was just so profound. And it's been, it's been something that I've, I've locked inside my being to sort of, you know, it's my, it's my little compass. You know, so that we don't get back into the thing and go like, I'm going to do a cute little show or whatever, whatever. But there's something about that necessity part that we can hold on to and it kind of refocus me a little bit. 
Yeah. A lot of people. Oh, I, I think if we're really present every day, we're not going back to business as usual. We're not. It's over. <laughs> South Lake Tahoe, you know, uh, everything. You know, uh, we don't know what's going to happen with Hurricane Ida. It's over. It's over the way that we that uh, this nation will call it America built empire and and try to spread and did spread its mentality and its global laws and global control. You know, it's it's done. You know, and, and there comes a point, I think even Star's vision of like, okay, I'm just going to pick a date. And I love that image of Star saying, like, I'm just shooting a dart into the unknown. That's, that's how we, that is our intention. Those of us, I mean, we, we have to take it. I mean, if people are talking about spiritualism, all this stuff, and I go, then be bold. Take your spiritual machete and just start hacking the path <laughs> and stop pretending like you know what the landscape is. You're not going to know what the landscape is mm -hmm. until, until you have the courage to take that, that spiritual machete and like go, Ooh, and, and not everybody's going to be able to do that. And that's okay. Don't, I don't think we should put our pressure on ourselves. Like, you need to, no, 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 because we, I think what's really valuable right now is to undo the language, like undo the language of leadership, mm -hmm. because that to me is done. Leadership is over. Mm -hmm. We don't know where the guidance will come from. So I'm, I'm changing my language and I, language saying I'm nobody's leader, but at the right moment with the right time, I might be able to guide something because if we're all cutting through these paths, I might get to one point in my path and go, oh, fuck, I don't know. Should I go this way? Should I go that way? And then Star steps on out, mm -hmm. out of the jungle, out of the weeds. And Star says, and I look in Star's eyes and Star says, you know, I got something over this way. And then my decision go, am I going to keep going into the unknown? Okay, no, I'm going to follow Star now. I'm going to be guided by Star. And then along the path, Nina steps in, and Sean and Troy and Joan and all this. And then we like say, okay, this is this is looking good right here. Mm -hmm. let, 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 let's lay out the table right here mm -hmm. for a minute. And because now we're all, we're, you know, uh, America, what we're doing right now and everybody's scrambling and except those who have wealth in real estate and have created the laws, keep trying to get us to, to buy into what was. And so I'm not buying, I'm gonna, and that's fear-based. Cause yes, what will we do as a nation if hundreds of thousands of people are evicted based upon the new Supreme Court ruling? Mm. What will we do? Who is our audience? Who are we creating with? Who are we creating for? Who are we feasting with? So I think this is a fabulous opportunity to ask ourselves really exciting questions because we forget we've always been pioneers. And I think the, the, the thing about a lot of um, black bodies and brown bodies and including First Nations bodies you know, white supremacy has been making us roam and and plant and figure out desert environments and for centuries now. So we're ready for this. We're ready for this. Let's just admit it. We're ready and make the effort and the work. I'm I'm here for this. I think this is, and I think um, visionaries like Star and Compo and you know, crowd of fire and Troy. Yeah. We here to play. What is play? Play is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to be a bitch here, but play is not copyrighted. Watch anyone that has children, go watch children play. And then you come in as the big, big parent and say, wait, are you singing the SpongeBob song? 
and playing with your little toys there, well, that's copyrighted. <laughs> and watch your kids look at you like, get the fuck. You know, so let's not kill ourselves with these laws that we didn't make because these laws that came in and stole everything and then made a law. And so I'm not here to play with that kind of law. Because as I said, if I had followed the law, if Rosa Parks had followed the law, we'd all still be sitting at the back of the bus. Okay. So let's not talk about the law. <laughs> but I love y'all, so I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <Sorry. laughs> no offense to anybody that getting a paycheck from the law. I get it. It's <laughs> all right. It's all right, because we still got to pay. Uh, okay. <laughs> you heard it here. I mark the day, how around everybody get your spiritual machetes on. Are you gonna be lost in the jungle, people? <laughs> lost in the jungle. I'm not gonna be lost. I'm gonna be with Star and Ellen and with uh, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to quickly say that building on what Ellen said, that it's really all about dreaming while awake. Like clearly we wake That's up and right. the nightmare is here. And we have to start dreaming while we're awake. That day felt like a dream to me. It felt yes. like a creative portal. And what came through to me is just that, like, we have all the tools. You know, it's not some future thing. It's it's within us. We're already there and we're already here. And right. we have to reclaim our time, literally, <laughs> and dream with our eyes open. Because the nightmare is always going to be there. So it's mm. like we got to create right. our own spiritual path with that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, it's wild too, just in terms of the, the the work mode, it's like, you know, we call star uh Campo Santo the third eye, you know, helps us see see beyond the bullshit. Keeps us rooted mm -hmm. in the daily, but mm -hmm. we can see beyond the bullshit. And we are in the middle of rehearsing this play that we've been working on forever of her, it's a beautiful play, side effects. And then we all went into the, you know, the chaos of shelter in place. And and then you stayed dreaming while awake, you know, starring it just, it, and that energy, it, even through the Zoom Zoom rooms and all that other nonsense, we're, it's still penetrated and um, we're still creating and gathering because of it. And we're going to do more of it. I mean, uh, stars, peace, side effects. We we decided to film in in the midst of the the madness, and that'll come out sometime in this year or something like that. And, <laughs> um, and then Star still has the two uh, plays that are going to happen. Yeah, um, shipping and handling. Yeah, so, shipping and handling will yeah. drop. With Crowded fire, and um, and then um, another play. It, currently titled Josephine that was, is directed by Ellen Sebastian Chang and Troy mm -hmm. you better be in it um, <laughs> and it will be a beautiful thing and um, we're actually going to do both of those pieces at, at, at Magic Theater in San Francisco here so we, we're going to have to change the name of the theater pretty pretty soon so it'll just be the Star Child Theater and <laughs> come one come all coming soon <laughs> to our theater near you all um, but um, I think that um, that's, I, I want to uh, say thank you to the people that also, thank you obviously how around for making this happen, this event obviously happened, but the whole of the thing where Mina and I started it off with, like mm -hmm. to have support and visionary support that looks outside of the box too, is just, it's so, so necessary. It's so, so necessary. Like. Yeah. We're strivers, and we, we would still we never going to stop telling the story. So we'll do it. Mm -hmm. But to have support and the amplification that you get yes. from some just and with bread because we do need bread um, yes. that we get from the melon and and how around mm -hmm. is just amazing. And to think that mm -hmm. two little joints that believe in people of color rightfully centered with Carter Fire and Campo Santo are the group that mm -hmm. said, hey, can we do something together to support this beautiful, amazing playwright? And, and you all made that happen. So thank you all for making that happen. And the event really wouldn't have happened without Carter yes. Fire with Bethany Heron and 
Sato, <laughs> the the woman that makes the world spin on its axis, my theater oh. wife, Joan Asato, the producing director of Campo mm-hmm. Santo, and yes. Brittany White, both making this event happen and that event happen. So that's that's all love. And you all are theater geeks that are listening to it, so you know that us mm-hmm. five represent 500 people that make every event that yeah. we do possible. So thank you to all the familias of Crowd of Fire and Campo Santo. And, um, yeah. Thank you. And I also want to put out a shout out to um, California Arts Council because mm. during the pandemic, you know, a lot of foundations, and this is for all the foundations who are listening, there was a lot more flexibility and it came down to just trusting us with this vision. And so we were able to move a grant that we were, you know, we were not able to produce. And so we, that's where we were mm-hmm. like listening and in a position to be like, let's use this resource and then not only will this be a moment of ritual this will be a way to support um with the bread you know all all of the the artists that we were connected to so thank you for that and i hope from that continues you know like talking about a new world like how do we step into this together and trust the artists to move forward with a vision yes yeah absolutely beautiful and some of the images David Mai did the video, like I said, and our, our own great genius, Jonah Sato, captured some of those portraits, and Adam Tolbert did some of the other photographs that you saw. I just want to put their names in the air again because they made so much magic happen and continue to is Ryan, Nicole, Peters, Austin, who was our MC for the day, and Ryan is just like the illest mm-hmm. multi-talent um uh, poet, performer, artist, producer, making up new words for the nomenclature because she does it all. And then Oyster Knife, an amazing, profound Mm -hmm. performance, dance, theatrical duo, and they're about to drop a new piece if you're in the Bay coming up uh, in right at the top of September. Mm -hmm. The great photographer, Brit Sense. You should get online and look for Brit Sense. She captures our neighborhoods beautifully. uh, Brittany Sensabaugh is her, her, her full name, but Brit Sense is the photographer's name. And then the great San Francisco poet laureate, Tango Eisen Martin. And actually, we, we're going to have a, uh, a live concert with Tango Eisen Martin, if anyone's in the Bay, at Magic Theater, October 15th. You heard it wow. here, people. Tango Eisen Martin. So in about 15 years, everyone's going to go. That classic album dropped that day. That will be October 15th. Right. 2021, and then the great, profound Baba Rashad Pridgen, this amazing masquerading outer, inner spiritual body performer who does things that are too supernatural to have words for. So look for all of those names. Those are amazing, beautiful, profound, black, capital B, black performers in the Bay here. And so um, whatever the numbers tell you with this bullshit census, the Bay is going to stay black and San Francisco have been trying to destroy it. It's never going to happen. So come out here if you want to see some of this beautiful art with us. And thank you all for joining us. Star, I want to plug too. Oh, wait, 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 Sean, I want to plug too. Wait. <laughs> plug on. Uh, because plug on. Troy, Troy plug one, plug is two. going to be with <laughs> Jordan Don in The Displace, written by Isaac Gomez. And we are actually heading into tech next week. So it was wild today even to move from the rehearsal hall where we were in our full bodies to being on this, you know, Zoomy Zoom where I was like, oh, wait, I don't want to go back. <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> like this. Um, it's been amazing and such tremendous, tremendous, tremendous talent and artistry. And it's, uh, we're doing a piece on displacement. It's going to be wild. It's a horror play. So it's going to be visceral and you will be in your body, shaking in your boots. So come on out and see it. We open September 17th. Yeah, and that's going to be live. And that should have been in the link, the HowlRound link for for tickets and more information on Crowded Fire Theater there. Come on. We're going to do a toast, Ellen? Come on, let's put it up. Let's put it in the air. (laughs) Yeah, I just want to quickly uh, thanks, Sean and Nina, and of course, Compo and Crowded Fire. Um, It it was just like literally the feeling of a dream come true. And um, let's all continue to dream out loud. 
And thanks for joining today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Blessings to everyone. Thank you. Yeah.